so uh, welcome once again to the uh, NPTEL MOOC module on handling classical data. We are at the verge of the final week of our module. Uh, we have already started discussion of the panel data in the last lecture and last lecture was purely conceptual, purely conceptual of panel data. I, al I always suggest everyone to uh, not to miss the previous lecture because that contains the background of the panel data. Any word we are using, any you know term you are using, we have already clarified in the previous lecture. Okay, so that is my suggestions for the participant to uh, certainly go through or uh, just have a look. You will you will be you know motivated to go for panel data analysis further. Now, in this lecture, we will have uh, clarification related to panel data models, uh, which type of models are used and why they are used. Okay. So, uh, here uh, in, in social science especially in economics data sets combining uh, time series and cross sections are very common. These data sets are rich source of information about economy. Uh, analysis of these data sets always allow, allow, always allows us research, allows researchers to learn about economic phenomenon or, or processes uh, that accounts for heterogeneity across uh, entities and their dynamics also. Uh, or the effects of the changes that are not captured in cross section analysis. Panel data model examines uh, group uh, effects that is individual specific okay, uh, or, or, or time effects or both okay. uh, individual specific basically a group effects that is called group effects in panel and time effects or both together in order to deal with the heterogeneity or individual uh, effect that may or may not be object. Coming to the model, uh, let us start with a simple ordinary least square model uh, y is equal to alpha, alpha plus uh, you know beta x plus epsilon. Okay. We have already clarified y dependent variable, alpha is the intercept, then uh, beta is the regression coefficient, x is the vector of independent variables and uh, epsilon is the error term. In this case, uh, you know, we are uh, trying to uh, pull this data over time and space to make it uh, panel format. Okay. Now, here we are using the subscript 2 subscript I mentioned from the beginning that panel comes with the 2 subscript, subscript I and T. Now, what we are mentioning uh, carefully that I and T subscripts in this model like you know y i y i t alpha plus beta x i t plus epsilon i t. Uh, here i and t are added to the equation that denotes units and time period respectively. Uh, there is uh, not much difference between these two equation uh, except that there are there are repeated observations on the same units okay? because of the time uh, variable. The above equation is known as constant coefficient models. Okay? Constant coefficient model uh, because we have included a constant uh, coefficient also in this model. Uh, that assumes uh, that the regression coefficients are con constant across units and times uh, time period. Okay, so that is basically called constant coefficient model. Now uh, uh, the general modeling framework for the panel data is like this. Uh, like yit, uh, the constant coefficient is not mentioned. Rather, it is mentioned with uh, uh, this term uh, and without uh, the the uh, t component, okay, the time component uh, term. Uh, like you now here, x variables are actually time variant, and the z variable are actually the the individual or space group specific variable. Usually, uh, sometimes unobserved, okay, uh, like uh, sex, race, location, or unobserved variables such as family specific characteristics, individual heterogeneity, or in skill, preferences, etc. Uh, those uh, usually taken constant over time, okay, those does not vary uh, over time. So, uh, so there are broadly there are two components time component and uh, cross section uh, I mean uh, the cross section component having no time variance okay, with the epsilon term these are called panel model. Now here the, the error term uh, that varies uh, over uh, the individual as well as over time okay, individual uh, ta, uh, as well as time. This error term is also known as idiosyncratic error. Okay, so there are randomness attached 
with the error term ok. Stochasticity attached with uh, across individual across observation also across time variable. They also uh, the famously used concept called idiosyncratic errors because the change the, 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 the change uh, they change across i as well as across t not just i across t also. So, these are called idiosyncratic errors all right. So, different estimation techniques are adopted based on the assumption about x, z and uh, the error term. Now, let us come to the estimating techniques. There are broadly three uh, estimation techniques discussed in panel. One is called pooled VLS model, fixed effect and random effect model. Uh, you might have heard about this uh, you know uh, majorly these two, but uh, most importantly fixed effect is you know used largely. But we will also discuss pooled uh, you know OLS model as well. Now, coming to the panel uh, data methods, uh, this, uh, this can be divided into two broad categories. One is called homogeneous panel uh, data models and heterogeneous panel data model. What do you mean by homogeneous uh, panel data model? It, this assumes that the, 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 that the model parameter are common across individuals the parameters we consider are actually common across individuals across i term we are taking the the, the parameters are co considered to be co common or the, the estimated parameters to be common where in case of heterogeneous uh, panel data model uh, you know uh, this allow for any or all of the model parameters to vary across individuals okay the the parameters that vary across individuals are uh, heterogeneous uh, panel data now, homogeneous panel data uh, is usually called pooled models ok. In case of pooled we have to make the variables to be you know uh, same name uh, to be same ok. The, so, the estimation the estimator for across individual uh, or the, the, the parameter to be estimated uh, across the individual to be same is not it. Whereas, in case of heterogeneous panel data model we since we do not have the same parameter uh, across individuals, we need to take fixed effect and random effect uh, models uh, in this particular case, especially for the case of heterogeneous panel data. Now, let us compare pooled OLS model, uh, understand pool, pooled OLS, let us understand pooled OLS model as the first category of the uh, panel format. In that case, uh, we said that that does not vary, uh, the parameters does not vary over time. Okay, but but uh, you know um, uh, that 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 parameters are are actually you know going to be constant for uh, the observations. Okay, so that is the reason why parameters are not added with subscript i or t. All right. So here the uh, alpha and beta you look at we are not adding the uh, subscript. So the above model is co also called a homogeneous model, not the heterogeneous model. So, therefore, uh, the constant alpha is the same across individuals and time. Uh, the coefficient beta uh, is constant across individual and time as well. Individuality of each subject is subsumed in the error term. Okay. So, the error term actually uh, you know subsume uh, the individuality of the uh, um, data okay, or information. Pooled uh, OLS uh, ordinarily square model, model treats a database like any other cross sectional data, ignores that the data has a time and individual dimensions, it simply considers cross section uh, units, but there are some problems we are going to discuss. That is the reason why assumptions are similar to that of the ordinarily square uh, model. Now, revisiting the assumption of OLS, uh, especially in the case of pooled uh, data. There are some challenges. Dependent variable is a linear function of set of independent variables and disturbance term. So, that is the standard assumption and the model is linear in parameters ok. Disturbances are not correlated with the regression uh, or regressors ok. Uh, the error term should not be correlated with the regressors that is called strict exogeneity uh, of all, all past, present and future time period that has been uh, pooled together in, in the data. And it rules out lag dependent variable. Okay. The idiosyncratic error, error is uncorrelated with the individual specific effects. Okay. Uh, those are the assumptions. The expected value of disturb, disturb, disturbance term is therefore 0. So, disturbances are homoscedastic or that is having same variance and uncorrelated uh, in nature. These are called having non autocorrelation. Now, consider a basic panel model, start with a basic panel model then. 
the basic panel model comes with uh, you know b, 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 beta x the coefficient then uh, you know uh, the 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 time variant uh, variable with and and then time invariant variable okay that's this is a basic panel model all right now here we are writing uh, another equation uh, uh, giving information about uh, the 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 constant term varies across individuals okay uh, so, in that case what, what is going to happen? Uh, uh, this model is a classical linear regression model if alpha I contains only a constant term okay? Be, because beta x is, is, is uh, you know uh, ex explained with the change in the you know uh, the, the uh, t t time variant uh, um, observations. Now, alpha I contains a constant term and then ordinary least square provides consistent and efficient estimates of the common alpha and the uh, slow vector beta all right uh, now as alpha i uh, alpha i is time invariant we have uh, one second mentioning because t component is not attached in alpha i uh, um, uh, because it varies across subject and is constant over time for a given subject the problem arises when alpha is unobservable okay and uh, as we cannot cannot measure its uh, contribution to the model since alpha i is mentioned and that is not observable then that is really a problem uh, to the model how it is uh, let us explain it for example in uh, in analysis of effect of location and family income on women entrepreneurs from uh, which culture is always be a missing or unobservable uh, variable uh, which is not actually observed. So, how to capture it uh, that is basically representing our alpha in this case. Now, since alpha is not directly observable, so it is treated as a random uh, you know uh, term and uh, usually subsumed in the error term error distribution. So, the error distribution in this case is a composite error term that is V i t we are defining alpha i, uh, alpha i plus epsilon i t. Okay, so, alpha is, is actually a, uh, subsumed in the error term. So, we are carrying with a VIT term. So, now alpha i term is included in the error term that is VIT that is correlated with the regressors. Okay. Now, so since it is subsu uh, uh, no, uh, subsumed in the error term that is obviously correlated with the uh, regressors. In this case, we have a violation of key assumption of the standard OLS uh, model. Okay, or the classical linear um, uh, regression model. So, the error term is not correlated with the regressors. Uh, so, disturbances uh, may not have constant variance, but vary across individuals okay? and that is basically uh, committing with an error called heteroscedacity. All right. Hence, OLS estimator is no longer defined to be blue uh, based linear unbiased estimator. Uh, then, uh, but, but there are other ways to deal with this problem such as fixed effect and random effect model that captures this heterogeneity. Now, coming to the clarification of fixed effect model, then last one will be on the random effect model. Fixed effect model is, is, uh, is the model, uh, 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 the individual specific effect is a random variable. The individual specific effect individual effect is actually random um, variable that is allowed to be correlated with the explanatory variable. Okay? So, uh, the individual specific effect is actually correlated with the explanatory variable that we are considering. The fixed effects model takes into account individual differences okay, translated into different intercept of the uh, regression line for different indi uh, individuals. Like basically, the individual uh, you know, um, uh, effect that is captured through the, uh, the fixed effect model uh, considered to be the intercept uh, in, the, in the regression line. Okay? And uh, the model in this case is assigned with, uh, subs with the subscript called uh, i to the constant term. Okay? We are going to clarify now. The constant term is calculated in this way are called fixed effect. Like here, now when we uh, uh, mention the same model where we have already committed with heteroscedacity through the OLS uh, approach. Now, we are converting into the, uh, the, the alpha i that is constant uh, you know, over time, but vary across individual the individual heterogeneity is captured here. Uh, now, this does not vary with t, but uh, so it is unknown intercept for each entity. Okay? Uh, the regression line is uh, raised uh, or lowered by a fixed uh, uh, amount for individual that is i. The regression line with a constant term will be actually 
uh, adjusted either higher or lower depending upon the uh, uh, alpha. I. In this case, the number of parameters would be uh, then k plus uh, k plus n as we have n individual effects. Okay, so uh, n individual effects are there, and uh, accordingly we can uh, find out. All right. Uh, so, okay. Now, as we do not know the statistical properties of uh, alpha i, it can be eliminated from the model. Now, the question here since it violates the OLS properties or the assumptions, uh, uh, especially the problem with heteroscedicity was there. So, alpha i was problematic. Okay. So, if you can eliminate uh, alpha i from the model, then you know uh, we are very much uh, assured with the standard uh, calculation. Estimation of the model parameter uh, and elimination of alpha i can be achieved using one, one of two estimation techniques. There are two approaches largely we are going to uh, discuss. Okay. So, within estimation or uh, uh, then least square dummy variable estimation LSDB famously known as. Okay. So, within, within group we can eliminate uh, since it varies with the group. So, we can eliminate with the average impact within the group then that is called within estimator. Then second one is <coughs> through dummy variable. <coughs> within group estimation, uh, one way to estimate a pooled regression is to eliminate alpha i by expressing the value of the uh, dependent and explanatory variables for each uh, individuals as deviation from their respective means. Okay. So, uh, since it, it, uh, it, it does not vary over time. So, if you in our data, if you simply take uh, the average uh, of that alpha i over time then that is that that will carry a constant term and so if you subtract that average that will uh, eliminate the uh, you know constant uh, individual effect okay like we are going to show it right now averaging the basic equation the equation we have already taken is y i t uh, now we are uh, going to take uh, the average of that so now uh, the model converts to beta x uh, the average of x i that is x bar uh, i y i bar uh, is equal to uh, x i bar plus alpha i since it is uh, constant over time okay so it is not going to be defined as 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 alpha bar okay uh, so, uh, simply it is uh, alpha i because it varies from, uh, from person to person not over time all right. But the epsilon term added with a time because you are dividing the time uh, you know time average. So, uh, all are these are in average this is an average this is an average but this will be a constant once we take the uh, average term of it. Okay. Now, uh, so here uh, 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 what is the average because 1 upon t, 1 upon t sum of uh, the, the i varies from t to uh, total time period uh, 1 to t uh, time period of y i t that will give uh, the average of this similarly for other terms also. Okay. Now, uh, the resulting values are called d mean or mean corrected values. Okay, or time means at each unit i time means basically uh, have been taken. Uh, next step is to subtract the, the, uh, the, the original model to the average uh, you know model uh, the uh, average uh, transform, transformed model. So, now what we have take the uh, y i t minus the y, uh, y i bar because t has been eliminated in this model. So, what is left here because since alpha alpha i or uh, alpha is nothing but alpha bar is equal to alpha bar every time. Okay. So, basically alpha is alpha is every time it is alpha i. So, uh, even average we have taken alpha i remains. So, if you take subtract both the equations so alpha i cancelled in both the case. Okay. So, what is left here is simply the net change uh, the from its, its, its average. So, now uh, it seems as, as if we are left with a standard you know, uh, you know regression equation. Okay. So, hence the effect is eliminated the average effect is eliminated that is 0. Now, uh, OLS can be applied this is what I just said OLS can be applied on above equation to estimate the parameter. One of the disadvantages of this uh, method is time invariant variables okay. because time we have already eliminated. Okay, so, we are not going to capture the time invariant impact or effects all right. So, uh, since these are wiped out because of the differentiating technique or differencing technique. Another uh, disadvantage of this method is uh, when we difference a variable we remove the long run component also uh, of that particular variable.
Now, the second approach of uh, the uh, fixed effect model is called uh, least square dummy variable um, estimation. The least square dummy variable estimation is, is uh, uh, this, this allows the heterogeneity, okay, allows for heterogeneity among subjects also by allowing each entity to have its own intership value. Okay, like you know, we have eliminated the individual impact. Okay, alpha you have simply eliminated in the previous, uh, you know, within group model. Okay, now in the LSDB we are not eliminating it. Rather, we are putting them in different categories, different dummies. Okay, like uh, you know, uh, in this the, the in the same model framework, uh, alpha uh, alpha has I subscript suggesting the intercept for entry uh, entity uh, would be different. Although the intercept may vary uh, across subject, but does not vary over time, it is time invariant. Okay, so, uh, so, it has value, but it is time invariant. The LSDB estimator is pooled to LS including a set of n dummy okay, variable, n dummy which I just mentioned, uh, uh, n dummy variables which identify the individuals and hence an additional n parameter since we are defining uh, you know the dummies to interpret it n minus uh, dom, uh, pa, uh, parameters are, uh, dummies are defined. If using separate uh, intercept term uh, we are left with n minus 1 dummy variables. Okay. So, n minus 1 dummy variables has been captured. Uh, uh, so, this, uh, this is also called differential intercept dummy technique, okay. differential intercept dummy technique. Uh, so, in, in, in simple equation y, y i t is equal to alpha 1, the, the time invariant uh, in, invariant um, you know value we are just mentioning in terms of dummy right now, it has a constant uh, intercept with uh, first dummy, uh, the second dummy till uh, n s dummy. So, in total we are including uh, n minus 1 dummy because we start with alpha 2 okay, dummy variables or uh, d 2 i is the first dummy variables with its uh, t, you know time <coughs> time uh, deep, uh, time variant you know uh, explanatory variables and uh, and its error term so uh, equation 1 is known as one way fixed effects okay so this is uh, uh, one way fixed effect because only intercept is allowed to differ between individuals okay uh, now but time effect can also be incorporated by applying time dummies all right. This type of model is actually called two-way fixed effect model. If we also find out the time uh, effect as well, time dummies could also be mentioned. There are some disadvantages of this, uh, you know, uh, dummy variable uh, technique. Uh, is that we are including so many dummies? Okay, there are uh, for based on the nth observation, if you are including n minus one dummies, the number of estimator will or uh, the the parameter uh, actually becoming very high, which reduces the degrees of freedom. Okay, so uh, so this may not be uh, able to identify the impact of time invariant variables. Many dummy variables will lead to the problem of multicolonality also because you know so many dummy uh, within a model we have already mentioned during our qualitative variable models that it may you know confront uh, with multicolonality problem. Coming to the understanding of uh, of uh, random effect, the third the uh, last model we are uh, discussing and its clarification we are giving is that a drawback of the fixed effect model is its failure to identify its any component of beta corresponding to regressor that are time you know invariant for a given uh, individual. Okay. Beta uh, which are time invariant are also not uh, properly captured. In the random effects model the individual specific effect is, is, is a random variable even the individual specific effect is also a random variable that is on correlated with the explanatory variable. So, that is the alpha I which we are saying that is also uh, time you know uh, uh, invariant okay? no, time variant. So, that is captured through considering the assumption of, uh, of its distribution identically distributed over individuals and over time as well. Now, how we are mentioning here symbolically alpha I in this case assumed to be uh, identically independently and identically distributed with its mean alpha and its standard deviation uh, sigma alpha uh, you know square uh, alpha uh, uh, of its you know distribution. Then its error term distributed with uh, you know 0 and uh, you know um, standard deviation uh, of that particular distribution. 
thus the random effect model can be written as here that you know since we have captured that alpha into the time variant uh, error distribution that is in um, you know composite uh, error term uh, here we have taken the name as VIT. Okay. So, uh, VIT is nothing but alpha e plus e, uh, epsilon IT. Uh, so, V i t is a composite term that consists of uh, two components that is alpha i which is cross sectional or individual specific error component and uh, you know uh, error epsilon i t is the combined time series and cross sectional error component. Because of uh, the uh, composite error because of composite error term random effect model is also known as error component model in, in, in short it is written as ECM. Okay. Uh, the alpha i are assumed uh, independent of uh, you know the error term uh, and uh, anxiety uh, the, the, the explanatory variables which are also independent of each other for all i and t. This assumption is not necessarily in the fixed effect model. Okay. So, we need to while understand whether it is a fixed effect or not we have some technique uh, mentioned in the slide. Uh, whether to differentiate whether the data is in uh, random um, uh, fixed effect model or in the uh, random model uh, random effect model or fixed effect model. The components of variance uh, is, is uh, the covariance basically uh, is, 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 is assumed to be 0. Okay? That is uh, in the random effect model is estimated by generalized uh, least square method. Okay? GLS we are going to uh, uh, GLS is going to be applied. Uh, and is relatively difficult to estimate than that of uh, the fixed effect model. So, as a comparison to a FEM that is fixed effect model and random effect model, we uh, need to take it uh, uh, I mean need to understand that uh, how do we know which model is more significant and relevant. The Hausmann test is, is very very important to be noted for your record that Hausmann specification test compares fixed and random effect model under the null hypothesis that individual effects are uncorrelated uh, with any regression in the uh, model. Okay? So, the individual effect are uncorrelated with the regressor that is uh, the alpha i we are mentioning it is uncorrelated with the you know uh, regressors all right? that is uh, the assumption. So, the Hausmann test uses the, uh, the co covariance of an estimate uh, uh, of an eff efficient estimator with its difference from an, an inefficient estimator is 0. Okay. So, basically it, it, it uses the, the, the Hausmann test gives uh, that the covariance of uh, an efficient estimator with its difference from, in, uh, for an, from an inefficient estimator is 0. The okay, covariance is expected to be 0. If there is no correlation between regressors and effects, okay, then fixed effect and random effect are both consistent. All right, but fixed effect is inefficient when there is no correlation. Okay, between basically that is the basic assumption of uh, the the random effect model that you know it is expected to be having no correlation. It has to be stochastically distributed. The uh, the individual effect which has been included in the composite error term has to be uh, randomly distributed. And now, if uh, we are getting uh, from our uh, test that there is no correlation between regression and effects, then uh, these are uh, the assumption is uh, violated. So that is why the uh, fixed effect is inconsistent. All right. So if there is correlation, then uh, if there is correlation, fixed effect is consistent. Okay, and uh, uh, so random effect is inconsistent in that case. Uh, correlation means it has you know the you know individual effect has certain uh, uh, has you know it is not randomly distributed. So, you have to you know nullify the individual effect in the model. Okay? You have to uh, separate it out by either uh, you know uh, group effect or by LSDP. All right. So, it is a test of uh, null hypothesis that random effect would be consistent and efficient against the alternative hypothesis that random effect would be inconsistent. All right, the test statistic is, is as follows. So, the test statistic is uh, uh, the, the beta uh, fixed effect minus beta random effect div, uh, divided by their uh, you know net uh, standard errors. Okay? So, that is uh, the, the standard deviation of uh, fixed effect uh, and the standard deviation of the random effect. 
uh, and if that is distributed uh, I mean that is estimated through the chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom. So, in that case uh, you know uh, beta fixed effect and beta uh, random effect are co uh, coefficients of fixed effect and random effect model respectively uh, s uh, square uh, or a square f e and a square uh, r e are variances basically uh, since we are taking square uh, of it uh, variance of the fixed and random effect model coefficients k is the number of parameters to be estimated. Okay. So, uh, so uh, in case of chi square test, uh, so generally the k in the bracket uh, denotes the number of uh, estimator, okay, number of uh, parameter to be estimated. Uh, the Hausman uh, statistic, uh, Hausman statistic has a chi square distribution with as many degrees of freedom as there are predictors in the model. Okay, depending upon the predictor accordingly we, we, we also we write down the degrees of freedom. If the p value is insignificant that is greater than uh, uh, 0 0.05 this means it is probably safe to use random uh, effects model. Okay. So, um, uh, so, so, once p value you get it will show it in the next class one it is exceeding uh, 0 0.05 it is uh, safe to use random effect model. Uh, and the fixed effect should be used however, uh, uh, however, if the statistic is significant okay? that means, uh, if your assumption is valid then you can apply your fixed effect model otherwise if it is not uh, you know, significant you may not use it. Okay, so, these are the clarifications so far on fixed effect model, random effect model even uh, you know, po pooled uh, OLS model. Uh, with uh, group effect with uh, we discuss with uh, LSDB model. So, these are the details for today and uh, or for this particular lecture and we will uh, you know apply the, the data package in the next class with the real data. Okay. So, thank you so much we we'll look forward to your uh, to, uh, to all of you in the next class. Thank you.